Well, hello there, chums. Now, this is another No Man's Sky video. We're about two hours and a half in, and I think we're going to be completed in this episode, people. So, yes, this is the Beachhead Expedition. Expeditions revisited with yours truly, Captain of the Steves. Heck <laughs> yes, No Man's Sky. Brilliant. I'll see you in the verse, people. Well, last time in Phase 4 we had a ripping good time. Yes, we had to go round and chat up all the different races with Inside No Man's Sky, the Corvax, Viking and Gek. Yes, and learn some lingos. Heck yes, we did. And go to some uncharted systems. All in the last episode we did that. Heck yes, we did. Phase 5, a bit different though. We go to Rendezvous 5 and then we've got some encrypted badges. We can't tell what they are. Let me just abandon my search for cactuses. We've done that. Anyhow, let's head on out. Yes, we don't need any more succulents. Heck no, we don't. Let's go and have a look for a shrubbery. <laughs> no, we're not looking for shrubberies. Right. Oh, I do love that, though. Holy Grail and uh, Monty Python. Anyhow, we're going off on a tangent. Well, I am. You're not. You're just watching. Yes, you're just watching me slowly go insane. Right, so here we go. We're jumping over to Rendezvous 5. And now that I've upgraded my warp drives, it can be done. Lickety split microchip. I guess we can. See what I mean about going insane. Right, before I actually go to the actual Rendezvous, though. Oh, look at this nebula. It's lovely. It's like flying in soup. Anyhow, let's go into the station. I'm going to upgrade my exosuit. And I'm going to grab myself a load of those little cubes. Yes, the blue and orange cubes. And those little hockey puck type looking ones. And get myself some navigational data. Now there is a reason for this. If I cast my mind back to when I last done Beachhead. Yes, I, I needed these. To get some alien maps. To actually hit up alien artifacts to go and use the dossier meteor on. You're probably thinking, Captain Steve, what the fudge are you talking about? It all makes sense in a bit. Do the prep work, do the leg work. If you haven't got a load of nav data, it doesn't overly matter. If you've got some paraffinium on you, that is. Because if you've got paraffinium, you could put down your exocraft bay. You could unlock some tech and use your scanner and your exocraft to find all of these alien monoliths and things. So that's another method. I'm going to cover both methods inside of this video. So be sure to keep watching, yes, because there's awesome tips in this video, I guess there is. So anyway, I'm heading down to Rendezvous 5, and hopefully that's going to trigger the next two encrypted missions to pop and start appearing. Well, the first one anyway, but almost straight after the first one, we've done a little bit of legwork, the second one pops, and then after that, the other two. <laughs> it happens so quickly, this, this happens very quickly, if you can grab the Quicksilver. And I'll show you two methods of getting the Quicksilver as well. A slow method and a slightly quicker method. Awesome. Anyway, let's uh, touch on down. Brilliant, yes, because you have to buy the Myth Beacon. And yeah, I got a little bit confused with the purchase of my Myth Beacon. And just so it doesn't confuse other people out there. Because if it confused me, it might confuse you. So yeah, stay tuned for that one too, because it's a bit of an odd one. But here we go, we're heading over to the Rendezvous Point. Yes, now these planets, these exotic planets, really got one fauna on. And if you are continuing on with your save, it might be worth you bagging that, scanning that one creature and uploading it because it goes towards the zoology milestone, which, yes, you need to actually do that on 10 planets, find all creatures. Easy on these planets. Where you want to be found. Yes, and it still pops the freaking milestone badge. So if you are a new player to the verse and you're using expeditions to get that little head start, nice little tip for you. There you go. These videos are full of tips. Yes, they are. Anyhow, let's press on over to the rendezvous point. Yes, I really do like the grass colorations on this. There's all different mottledy patches of different colors. Purples, greens, browns, and sort of like a burgundy color as well. Very nice. I love these shroom-capped planets. I really do. I just wish that there was yeah, big trees on there and stuff and, you know, lakes and things. But you very rarely get get all that sort of gnarly stuff going on in these planets. They're quite flat after a while. You're, oh, well, you've seen one. You've seen more, technically. Here we go. Rendezvous 5. But that said, this one's got beautiful grass. So, yeah, it's not really a true statement. Right, brilliant. We call on in the ship. But when it comes to the assets, like, yeah, it kind of is. Yeah, it's, it's a mixed statement. They're getting better, is what I should have said. They're getting better. Because they were worse than this, and now they've got a lot better. So, you know, so it's going in the right direction. That's what I should say. It's more positive, isn't it? Who cares what it is? And it's more true. Yeah, awesome. Brilliant. So, we've now hit that up, and there we go. We've got the next badge. Yeah, so we can use the historic... Of whatever that freaking thing is. Yeah, so, yeah, brilliant. We can now go to alien sort of areas, and it says here that you need to use maps. Not necessarily true. We can use an exocraft, but I'll show you that in a moment. Let's go with the method that it's actually telling us. Let's go up to the station and spend all of our navigational datas. Yeah, why the fudge not? And buy a load of those alien maps and see how we get on with popping the alien maps. Now, you can take dossier meters from 
the actual plaques yes the alien plaques you can get them from and also the monoliths i haven't been to one of the relic sites you know where there's the ball on the top of the bridge type thing i don't know whether you can get a reading from those because i didn't get one and one didn't pop up for me so i'm unsure i only got plaques and monoliths i was super freaking lucky yeah so there we go let us know in the comments if you can get them at relic sites just for other people and other viewers that'd be nice the first one to put it in there i'll probably pin their comments there we go there's a little mission for you it's out there in the view of us let's head on into the next years and let's um why am i going into the nexus hmm you're probably wondering yeah well i'm just gonna head on over to the exocraft merchant while i'm inside of the nexus and i'm gonna buy some tech bits for later on in the actual uh, video because although that you can hit up three maps and go to three sites you i mean you could carry on doing it with maps but um yeah basically these myth beacons cost 80 quicksilver okay now each site you go to only gives you 15 so you're only going to end up with 45 by the time you finish the mission you have to do another a fair few others to get the 80 that you need you know you're probably going to have, end up with 90 just to be sure but yeah i'm buying all the sort of transmittery type things the scanners the signal boosters from this chap so this is i believe his name is perseus there you go so i'm buying them off of him thank you very much there awesome so i've grabbed all of those all of those in a line you only need the first one and the second one a and b but uh, i mean uh, the first one than B. Yeah, it's not A and B because A is at the bottom. But yeah, you, I purchased it anyway. I've got the nanites. Why the fudge not? But I think you really need the first two. Lovely. So we've got those. Now to install them, you are going to need quite a lot of chromatic metal and a lot of circuit boards. So I'm going to go into the station. I'm going to buy those circuit boards. I'm also going to buy some wiring looms because, yes, I, I want to install some tech into my ship and things. If I was to continue on with this, then yes, I would probably make my ship a little bit more, more OP. And maybe even the extra crafts might go to town. So I'm going to buy a few wiring limbs why i'm here but you don't need them what you need is chromatic metal and circuit boards i'm just going to buy 10 circuit boards while i'm up here but then i'm going to go see the cartographer and we're going to go and give them all of my navigational datas and i want the alien charts yes that's the purple ones down here so we're going to grab those lovely jubbly i want all of your alien charts yeah i can only buy like eight that's not too bad. I think that will get me all the quicksilver I need if I'm lucky in what it actually throws out. Monoliths, plaques, and I don't know about relic size. But yeah, there we go. So I'm going to go in here. I'm just going to buy 10 of these micro processors. Yeah, we'll have 10 of them. Thank you. And yes, why I'm here, I'm just going to grab some wiring looms. I'm probably not going to need them. I'll probably end up throwing them away. But I just grabbed a half dozen of them. Brilliant. I think we're set to go. Heck yes, we are. Well, well I get some metal plating as well. Because metal plating you need for the Exocraft Bay. So you're going to need paraffinium you're going to need those metal platings and there's another thing i think it's the ion batteries but we'll get to that when we get to it anyway let's head on off and let's get this sorted out shall we so we've got a load of maps now so i can pop a couple so yeah let's just pop one for now and see what we get shall we so let's, let's fly it out and let's see what we actually get so sometimes if you want to find an alien chart on a specific planet fly into the atmosphere and then pop the actual uh, map rather than pop it in the station because sometimes the station will just pop it on any planet now i looked around there's quite a lot a few base markers comms balls and things already in this area so i'm flying down to a planet that didn't look too busy and i'm going to pop the map in the atmosphere of the planet that doesn't look too busy when it comes to markers because there's nothing worse than losing your marker behind a base marker and then going well where the fudge did that go you know so you may even want to jump to a new system before you pop these maps completely up to you i will jump to a new system when i do the exocraft method so we we'll, we we'll cover that one off anyhow so here we go let's fly on over to the monolith now i'm going to do all three of these i'm just going to play some music in the background because it's pretty much a rinse and repeat type thing
So we reconvene at the plaque. This is the last one to actually pop the badge. You can see there, 15 quicksilver per thing that I've been to. I've been to three, so I've got what, 15, 30, 45. These things cost 80, so I'm probably gonna have to do another three to get to 90 to actually buy the actual myth beacon. So here we go, let's pop this anyhow, boom. And then when we move over to the next one, it says go and purchase yourself a myth beacon. So yeah, that's up in the actual Nexus. Let's go and have a check and see how much these things cost in the nexus just to confirm and you'll see that the price will be all read, read it out but let's go and have a quick look anyway and um i will show you two ways to go about and get in all of these things and to recharge my launch thrusters so yes you are going to need a fair bit of launch thruster fuel so perhaps grab some of that while you're in the station or the actual parts to actually build them out or craft them right so let's head on into the space anomaly and let's go and see Quicksilver Merchant, Johnny Five as I call him. Yeah, it's Quicksilver Synthesis Companion. Uh, and he's all the way over here. Yeah. Hello there, little chappy. He does look a little bit like Johnny Five. Well, the head does. The body definitely doesn't. But hello there, buddy. Right, so we're going to scroll down. You can see here I've got a lot in here that's already available. I could unlock all this stuff because I have another saves, but I'm pretending I'm a new player. You can see there it says buy for 80. 80 Quicksilver. However, I thought it said that they were a thousand Quicksilver, but no, you can buy up to a thousand at once. So I thought I needed a thousand Quicksilver, so I went and ran quite a few of these Quicksilver missions. But you know what? You run one of these Quicksilver missions, and you're going to have enough Quicksilver, because they're going to give you 250, to just buy it outright anyway. So you don't have to go to any more of those sites and get 15 per pop. Completely up to you. I mean, you've only got to do another three of them, and, you know, they take what? Three, five minutes, three to five minutes each. So maybe it's going to take you 15 to 20 minutes tops, perhaps. Whereas one of these missions, depending on which one you get, if you get Hunt Pirates, you can do that in milliseconds if you've got a decent ship. Yeah, so it depends on what you want to do. So I've just hit on up a mission here, and I'm going to go and run this mission. Now it's Tame uh, Fauna. I've got to tame 40 of the little suckers, which can take quite a while. Now you can craft the actual carbon pellets, well the creature pellets, inside of your exosuit, but it's going to cost you something like 60 carbon per pellet. But if you do it in a nutrient processor, it's one to one. Heck yes, so here you go, I'm going to go and feed some creatures. Okay, so that's the normal way of feeding them. I just made them in my actual inventory space. I'm just grabbing some carbon. I'm annoying some sentinels at the moment. Yeah, it's a little bit tedious. But anyhow, let's put down a nutrient processor. And once I put down the nutrient processor, I'll show you that it's actually one-to-one -one in the actual you know, the way that you do it. But I need some sodium to actually put down a nutrient processor. So I'm just grabbing some sodium plants. And now we should be able to put down the nutrient processor. Brilliant. Head on over to that. And when you actually put the carbon into here, so this is another nice little tip for anyone. If you want to make the creature pellets to tame creatures it's one to one in here rather than 60 so it would have been 60 per pellet i'm getting 30 for like 20 freaking mental there we go there we are nice little tip for you anyway back to feeding creatures i'm going to speed up the footage yet again Only one more creature to feed a Kate, and we're done. Mission is completed, Kate. Heck yes, it is. Brilliant. Let's head on over to my ship and let's fly back up to the Nexus and hand in this mission with inside the spatial anomaly. Brilliant. I am growing. I'm, I'm growing to like this ship. It's actually really quite a cool ship. I think I'm going to miss it when it's gone, especially with the blue sort of glows to the actual hull. And I've got the blue glow to the helmet as well. It's quite a nice look, I think. Yes, I'm kind of enjoying this character and this ship. Anyway, complete mission. I'm not going to be keeping the save, though. I will be getting rid of this at some stage. I guess I will. Done. 
and I just got 250 Quicksilver. So now I could buy the Myth Beacon if I wanted to, but I'm just creating a save to bag that Quicksilver because I've got enough now. But this is to show you how to actually put down an Exocraft and continue on with finding those free places. So what I did there is I selected Star Bramble or Star Bulb inside my catalogue, and that should pinpoint a lush planet inside of the galactic map so I can go there and get the paraffinium that I need for the Exocraft Bay. Now, if you did put down the Exocraft Bay in Episode 1, like I did, and drive to where you need to go to pop the badge, if you would have deleted the Exocraft Bay after you've got into your Exocraft, or, or summoned your Exocraft, you get all your materials back, and you can use it again in the future. Schoolboy error, I didn't do that. Didn't tell you guys to do that. So hindsight, sorry people. But yes, you could have took your sort of Geo Bay with you wherever you go. Anyway, Ex Exocraft Bay. Anyhow, brilliant. Let's head on over. Oh, look at that. That's a beautiful lush planet, if that is the lush. I mean, it could be fungal. No, it is the star bulb. Oh, nice. Blue oceans. Green grass. Has it got super duper awesome trees? And what colour is the sky? Oh, this could be awesome. And it's ringed as well. What a find. What a beautiful little gem. Lovely. I'm, I'm quite intrigued to see what this planet looks like. There's moments like this that I think No Man's Sky really comes into its own. You, you find a planet, you're like, oh, 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 I can't wait to land on this. It's that, it's that air of discovery. And I'm still finding in stuff like this even today when I'm 900 hours in so yeah it's quite cool I mean yes if it had Diplos on here or something like all the little bipedal chaps like I call Stevie would have been would have made my day yes yeah definitely would have put a base on here and maybe come back in my normal save but the yellow sky mm, do I like that it could have been better if it was pink perhaps more of a contrast but it's still nice still kind of nice right brilliant so now it's trying to locate the star bramble so I'm just going to abandon the search for star bramble because I just wanted to find a star bulb world because I need the paraffinium that is upon this world so now I need to find paraffinium where are you paraffinium so I'm looking for that one that looks like, I don't know, Trivial Pursuit type logo -y type thing, or a, a Domino's Pizza logo. Yeah, so there we go. It's over there. Brilliant. We found our paraffinium deposit. Now, when you are mining out of the ground, using your terrain manipulator, I always sort of aim to one side and shrink my beam. I'm just going to make a little bit more launch thruster fuel, because we may be taking off a few times, because we're going to scan using the Exocraft, then get in our ship and fly to the actual location. So yes, what I'm doing is aiming off to the side. I'm using the L1 to shrink my beam, and then I'm going on to the actual deposit. You're going to get a lot more of the resource out of the ground in the deposit and then uh, just aiming straight at it and blasting it. You're going to take it out in, it's going to be quicker, but you're not going to get as much. Right, so here we go. We're going to get a shed load of freaking paraffinium. I think you would need some like 50 or so to put down the actual bay, but I'm just going to town and getting the whole freaking deposit. But through the power of editing, you didn't go through that pain of mine. No, awesome. We've got all of that. Sweet, lovely, awesome, super, great and smashing. Right, so here we go. Okay, I need to make one more metal plate. Not a problem, not a problem. So you can just hover over and press square again if you've got the commodities and it makes another one. Brilliant, lovely, cool. And as I head on over here, and then you don't have to use another slot to craft it. Right though, we've got our Exocraft, awesome. And now what I need to do is install a cane to those sort of um, signal boosters that I bought earlier. So make sure you put in the main one first. And uh, yeah, I'm just going to put in the secondary one. Yeah, I think it's the one marked with a B rather than A. So here we go, let's put in that one then. And there we go, boom, boom, done, and diddly, diddly. And I think that's all you need. I think you already need those two. Now I'm going to go for the last one as well. I'm going to put it in, but I haven't got all the resources. I'm running short. And gold, yeah, I'm going to have to go shoot some asteroids to get the gold, unless I've got something that I can spin into gold, but I don't. Lovely, awesome, there's the Exocraft. I'm just going to get in it. I'm going to scan for the monolith, or alien structure, because it also finds plaques. Boom, it's found a monolith. I'm going to jump out of the Exocraft, and before I go over there, I'm going to delete this bay. Then I get the paraffinium back, and all the other bits and bobs. Now, if you have got a teleporter inside of your freighter, you can just keep calling down the Exocraft over and over. Um, but no, I haven't, so I'm just going to delete that bay and take it with me. So I believe that once you've got a bay on the planet, though, you can just call in the Exocraft wherever you want. But just in case I leave this planet and completely forget to go and pick up my bay, it's best just to do it then and just put it down whenever I want the Exocraft. It's no hardship. Awesome! We're flying over to the monolith and I'm going to be touching down. I'm a bit forgetful. Yes, obviously, because I didn't pick it up in phase one, did I? So there we are. I don't want to make that schoolboy error again, so I'm just going to get in the habit of scanning, removing, going, 
placing, scanning, removing, etc. Rinse and repeat. So here we go. We've got ourselves another one. So this is going to get us 15 quicksilver. Yeah, imagine if it was a thousand quicksilver gone. You'd be here all freaking day doing this because there's only two quicksilver missions. That said, there is the weekend mission that pops on a Friday at around about 6 p.m. UK time. Don't know what that is in your own time zones, but doing that one mission would net you 1,200 quicksilver. Yes, I know, that's a lot of quicksilver, right? Yeah, so yeah. If you still got to do this over the weekend, it's probably best to just do this over the weekend, yeah, because you're going to fill your pockets a heck of a lot quicker doing the weekend mission. Yes, you are. Bro, awesome. So I now have 560 quicksilver, which is more than enough. But you know what? Just so you get the idea of how to do this step, I'm just going to put down the exocraft. Once again, I'm going to go over to it. Uh, now I've got to call it to this platform. Not a problem. Just hit the blue screen. Hitting the red screen will bring up customization options. If, you, if you're wondering what the heck's going on, there's two screens. Right, brilliant. Awesome. Let's um, hit an up. An alien object again. Boom! Monolith! Another, another monolith? Heck yes. Now, you could also interact with all the knowledge stones and perhaps even learn the atlas words while you're doing this. So, completely up to you which method you want to use to get your freaking 80 quicksilver. But there we go. I've now deleted the actual bay and I'm off on my way yet again. So, you're going to need a lot of launch thruster fuel and a lot of patience for this one. I would suggest doing the quicksilver mission like I did earlier and getting this done right away. But just the two methods. Why not? It's the last episode. Let's go, in, let's go to town with tips. Tips episode. Awesome. And look where I land. Look at this. Look at this landing. I've landed on top of the freaking thing I need to interact with. How? How have I done this? This is a freaking mental. Now I can't interact with it. And I don't want to move my ship because I don't want to use any launch thruster fuel. So yeah, I'm going to try and access it from underneath. Yes, we're going through the back entrance. Brilliant. Awesome. There we go. Boom. We're done. We have interacted with it. Brilliant. Lovely. And yeah, take dossier meter reading for nada. Brilliant. Awesome. And there we are. Now, there are different phrases that it gives as well. So if you are a bit of a lore buff like me, you might like to do this method because you get the little snippets of lore that might indicate of what's to come with the actual encrypted missions. But you probably can tell from my thumbnails what's to come as the end thing here. Yes, Normandy crossover. You all know. It's out there in the verse. Heck, Sean Murray even tweeted about it just the other day. But here we go. Let's go and see if we can pick up that myth beacon now. As I say, it's only 80 quicksilver. And I want to say a massive great big thank you to Fire Knight. So the other day I was airing my previous episode and Fire Knight said, it's not a thousand quicksilver, Captain Steve. No, it's only 80 quicksilver. You can buy a thousand of them. The price is above it. Yeah, so there's the price there. And it even says down at the bottom, 80 quicksilver. I read it wrong. I thought it was a thousand. So I was trying to get a thousand quicksilver. Hence why my... Yeah, but anyway, that's why I've done the two methods and things. Just in case. There we go. We've got the actual myth beacon. Lovely jubbly. And now it does say just to, you know, launch the actual myth beacon. If you do that in the Nexus, you lose your myth beacon. You have to buy another one. So don't do that. Follow the instructions letter by letter. So it actually says fly out into space and use your galactic map to find a decent place to activate the, dos the um, myth beacon. Okay, so make sure you do that. Make sure you read and do that. Don't just pop it straight away because the actual badge just reads like, oh yeah, activate your myth beacon. Deploy the myth beacon. You see it there within small text. Read this text, because it says about it what you need to do anyway. So, lovely. And it also tells you in the bottom right corner in a moment, as I'm going to my ship, you see there? Galactic map and press down, and it should echo a source for you to actually pop the actual myth beacon. Don't just pop it in the freaking Nexus. I did that in my first playthrough. If you want to see what happens, watch my old video on this when I first done it the first time around. These steps confused the freaking fudge out of me. And when the Normandy flew in, I didn't even see it. I looked up after it had flown in, I was like... Oh, okay. So I didn't get to see the lovely cinematic transition. So I'm going to show you what to look for so you don't go and miss that as well because it is freaking epic. It sends chills up your spine. <laughs> Unless you completely balls it up like I did on my first time. Yeah, so here we go. Let's, um, let's, <laughs> let's jump to where it gives us in space. And it's marked it with like an Atlas sort of logo, hasn't it? Yes. Threw me a little bit that. I was like, what? Why? Why? Because Nada and Polo are on the run from the Atlas. Why would they choose that as an icon? A little bit weird. I guess they run short on icons to use. You know, I guess if they used the Normandy logo, it gives the game away, doesn't it? So here we go. Brilliant. We have arrived in where it has sent us. Nice. It's already been discovered by Hello of the Games. 
Right, and we're going to be heading over to the actual location once it appears on the screen. Which shouldn't take too long for it to appear. Okay, well I can see the icon now. But we have got this freighter interaction. So I've got these little pirates against me. Now what I would say is the missiles are freaking awesome. If you haven't installed the missiles, they make short work. Even more so than the Positron Ejector. And they've got like a massive range as well. Far greater than that of the Positron Ejector. You can see here I can take out one ship. And by the time that the rockets have recharged, I'm ready to take out the next one. Even though I'm flying quite fast towards it. Boom, you're dead. Heck yes, didn't even see that coming, did they? Yeah, just straight through that freaking window screen. Kaboom! Yes, welcome from the captain to oblivion. Boom, you're dead as well. And I think we've only got like one left to go. And it, the, the battle was over before it even started, really. I missed him. Um, yeah, and when you get the, on it, as soon as the icon changes shape, then, then you're pretty much ready to fire. It's as simple as that. I took that one out with a positron injector. Boom, all dead, done, awesome. We can carry on our merry little way. Right, so where is it? There it is, it's over there, and we're going. Brilliant. Activate Mondo, Warp Drive. Awesome. Right, well, we're nearing the actual site. Now, normally what I would do is look for a comms ball, which I can see there's one right by it. But you know what? I'm going to land at the marker, and we're going to walk towards it, because this is the crescendo. This is the end sequence. Let's do it like I was a new player, and I don't know better, and I'm going to land at the site. We're just going to land at the actual place and walk over using our scanner. Heck yes. So let's, we're going to use our sweep scanner. Now, as you're flying over this, you're going to see that there are bases actually placed there as well. So if you are on previous gen, I would suggest flying in slowly just in case there's even more here so yeah just take it easy because you don't want it to crash in your last step in fact you might want to fly into the station and make a save here being that there's a base at the actual location you might even be able to use the teleporter to teleport to the actual base itself if you get the base name before it crashes if you if, if you're struggling that much anyway this is another one of those cr creature planets so it has one creature so scan that i can upload it get some nanites heck yes i can lovely and here we've reached a place where we can pop the beacon now, I've popped it in the right place, and you get the badge straight away. Now, you might be tempted to go into the menu and claim that badge. Don't. Don't just yet. Just look around in the sky, and you're going to see a little icon appear. You see it there? That one that looks like the little north star? Just keep watching there. You're going to see those little pulse rings coming out of it. A little bit like when you get pirate interactions. And just wait. Boom! There's your cinematic scene. There's your cinematic screen. Don't go in popping badges and all that sort of stuff and go into menus and claiming stuff and playing with your inventory. You have missed the wonder that is your Normandy flying into the actual space, which is what I done last time, people. Yeah. So there we go. Awesome. That's how you get the Normandy. That's how you get the most out of it. And there are all your tips for this episode on how to do it all different spangly dangly ways. And I hope that you've enjoyed this. <laughs> See on the message boards. There's one there for League Gamers. League Gamers is another content creator. Go check him out. He's always got tips on duplication methods and all sorts of weirdness. Yes, great guy. Check him out. Yeah, awesome. Here we go. I'm calling in my ship. Well, let's have a quick look. See, let's have a look around. Well, when I say uh, let's have a look, see, let's have a look around, I mean I'm going to take on off and we're going to actually fly next to our Normandy. And when you get close to your Normandy, you get a hail. So just slow down as you get close to it. Don't just go whizzing past it or whatever. And you're going to see that you're going to get like an incoming transmission from the Normandy. And you interact with it and that's when you can add it to your actual frigate fleet. So here we are. Brilliant. Now, if you do want this cross save, so if you hit up another save, you can then go to the Quicksilver Companion. But you're going to have to claim the Normandy, land again, and save your game by getting in and out of your ship, create an auto save or make a manual save or whatever. Yeah, don't just turn up at this stage and then hope that you've got it in your other save because it may not happen. Brilliant! Also, you need to pop all the badges. Yes, and there's a title badge that's a bit sneaky, which I need to show you guys. So there we go. We've now got the Normandy. Damn, I was going to take a photo, but it started to shift away and it's ruined my photo opportunity. But yes, what a lovely planet. I'm loving this purple skies and the purple ground. Quite a nice world. Friday right on a nice little badge as well. Brilliant. So we've now got all of those. Now I can pop the rewards for here. So there we go. Done. Dilly done. Runaway mold. That spins into nanites, by the way, people. Yeah, you may see people actually putting down runaway mold farms during your expedition. If you do, go visit one, grab a load of freaking runaway mold, and you can get a load of nanites, you can get all your modules and things. 
pretty darn sneaky. Right, so we've popped that as well. Now, you might think that's all of them. It's not. There's one more sneaky badge to actually hit up. You know what? I'm going to fly up to my actual freighter and create a save on my freighter. You can do it in the station. You could even just land back on the planet if you want to get in and out of your ship there. But I'm just going to do it on my freighter. Nice one. At least when I fly out of my freighter, I might see my Normandy. There's a big section of my freaking freighter missing then. That was a bit weird. Didn't render in. Right, let's uh, land here. And let's jump out of my ship and we'll do all the sort of waves and things and oh, it's been freaking awesome that's another playlist of expeditions done so i will be doing another one for expedition three in expedition three you can get the diplo trunks and the giant eggs so catalog completionists yes make sure you see the next one heck yes people i see you for the next one definitely now for that sneaky badge so the sneaky badge just go to phase five and hit that one down in the bottom that one the big golden freighter. The big golden freighter we didn't get as a prize. We got a Normandy instead. Hit that and you're going to get the title of Renegade and you're also going to get the banner, which, yeah, make sure you get them because they're awesome. Well, the banner is. The banner is great. You can deck all for your base. Okay, so I'm going to jump in my ship, out of my ship, create a save. That's all banked. Nice one. Until next time, people, you've been awesome. Jerry Bynes, goodbye, goodbye, and goodbye again very much for watching if you like what you see please hit a like and a subscribe and i'd like to say a massive great big thank you to all of my backers over on patreon and over on youtube membership thanking you backers and if you want to support this channel just don't skip the adverts that throws revenue down my avenue or yeah just stay with captain steve that little bit longer and hit something on this screen there's merch here now too